Hey guys, it's me, Dan. Um, just thought I'd do a video about some of my drawings. Um, I started doing Mr. Toast drawings like 2001, 2002. Um, I was working until like 1999. I think I quit my job in, in 1999 or 2000 and started, I decided to try and become an artist. Um, I'd already sort of done art you know through college but I really wanted to focus on things so I said okay now's the time I'm just gonna start working on stuff and pretty quickly I got doing Mr. Toast in around 2003 I'd come up with Mr. Toast when I was in college and uh, sort of the, the whole impetus of all this stuff which we can actually go to this drawing here's a drawing of the imaginary world and the imaginary world was going to be a theme park, kind of like um, Disneyland. And there was going to be these gates and all these different places. And there was going to be an ocean and insects and all sorts of the fairyland. There would be a storybook land, a star castle, and a midway and a ghost land carnival. And these things were all based on drawings I was working on. As you can see, I was still trying to figure out how to draw but the idea was I'd sort of center my artwork I'd have this sort of central idea of a theme park that I would be building around and so initially I was making like models of these things which were you know kept in my living room and you know I was trying to just deal with all this stuff because I you know I grew up in Orange County so I love Disneyland I love theme parks I was collecting theme park stuff and really looking into all that stuff. Oh, here's another one. You know, Plaza of the Ages with an atomic clock, the Bug Petting Zoo, there's the Cloud Castle, House of Flowers, Flying Saucer Pad, there's a volcano in the middle of Dino Land, and I actually made some little Dino Land souvenirs that I sold at a show one time. And so I was, I was just trying to sort of... Um, inhabit that sort of theme park thing and I I quickly came to the conclusion that I had to have characters in this thing because you know Disneyland although they have all the sort of interesting things they also have Fantasyland which is sort of based around you know Snow White and Sleeping Beauty and Pinocchio and then they have Mickey Mouse and all the cartoon characters which sort of flavor a lot of things in Main Street and whatnot and they had True Life Adventures which is you know so the, and the, on the Disneyland show they dealt with all that stuff so they had media that they were producing which then was focused into the park and so you know I was looking at that and thinking about that and so I went and I started looking at what I had, which I, I looked and I had Mr. Toast, who I'd come up with. I had Joe the Egg, who I'd come up with before when I was in college. And so I was like, well, these these could be my characters. And so, you know, I started doing drawings of characters. So this is like the Hillbilly Pear Band. And so, you know, kind of like the Country Bear Jamboree, my, instead my characters were, were these little pear guys. And as you can see... I was still, uh, you know, still trying to figure out what the heck I was doing. And then at a certain point, I realized, you know, Mr. Toast was was the way to go. And also, during this whole thing, I will jump around. So I will pull out some drawings that have, that are, you know, 10 years in the future. And so this isn't going to be a completely linear thing. But um, here's like a little drawing of a witch castle, you know, where the turrets are witches. Okay, you know cool I mean fun so you know there's another one mysteries of the deep with this octopus and sort of a Roman columns and you know Roman temple sort of thing what what does this mean what's inside I don't know I'm just trying to do stuff that gets all of that stuff percolating and as I said I ended up on Mr. Toast and I think um, and at this time, I, I think in 2003, I started doing my webcomic. And so, you know, like Mr. Toast says, try Sud. That was, this was like a sketch for one of the webcomics, which 
the web comics were just single panel comics. I'd come up with an idea and I was doing it once a week. Then I was doing it two times a week. Then I was doing it like three times a week for many, many years. And I have another box packed full of those. There might be even some of those at the bottom of this box, which we may get to. Oh, here's another, another imaginary world thing. And so, you know, so then I started making things like this, which is, you know, what can be in a man in nature? What can be in an industry? What can be in the center? What can be in a storybook land, in a ghost land? And I just kept writing and trying to draw submarines, burrow ride, Grant can you know, lookout point. You know, our Santa, you know, we'd have a Santa's village in there. And so these, you know, these are all ideas that have sort of other parks have looked at. But, you know, here I was trying to trying to do my own original thing. And then along the line, you know, Mr. Toast comes up and, you know, I do a drawing like this. And it's like, there's Mr. Toast with his gigantic eyes. And it's a circus, um, a circus wagon. So I started thinking about circus. And I was like huh maybe i can you know circus that makes sense so i was like okay maybe i'll do mr toast at the circus and this can be a book you know i i'd never written a book all i was i'd been doing these you know single panel comics for you know less than a year and i was like yeah i need a book and so mr toast at the circus became the book and oh, i think i have some of these older drawings in here which i think sort of sort of deal with that you know oh so here we go yeah 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 these are some of the these are some of the earlier drawings that come before the circus book let's see let's get those out those are good to look at so you know i just start doing these sort of watercolor drawings giant eyes you know have some text down here and it's me trying to play with with color lights out Peace, Nick. And many of these ideas are going to be revisited um, in buttons and all sorts of things. Here's, here's the trapeze. As you can see, I didn't know what I was doing. You know, the lines are very... <laughs> my lines have gotten somewhat better, but they're not the greatest of all time. And, you know, look at what some of these things are some circus things. Mr. Toast doing circus stuff. You know, look at the cannon. It maybe could fit Mr. Toast in there. And he has a little tiny helmet with a T on it. Oh, what does this one says? This one says, Mr. Toast at the circus. Selling peanuts. With a snake. Must have been somebody's birthday that day. Here he is as a ranger. Here he is selling tickets. Here he is as a fry cook. I also did a bunch of... Um, like I'd find like natural environment things and then try to draw them with Mr. Toast in there. Uh, early promotion for my t-shirts. Cause I was a big fan of Paul Frank and Paul Frank, you know, was and is still completely amazing. And he had his t-shirts out there and you know, Julius and all that stuff. And that all blew my mind. Here's a very early uh, Mr. Toast and his flying saucer where the eye got blown out. You know, doing a doing a little Hamlet. Um, so, circus was making making some sense. So I so I said, let's you know, let's just go for it. And I think I just started drawing. I don't think I wrote anything first. And I just started drawing the pages. You know, here comes the marching band. As you can see, you know, in some cases I would do it. And then on the back of this one are the flying peanuts. Come see the world's strangest sights. The educated cow. The snake charmer. Step right up to the sideshow with Joe the Egg. Look at, look at, this, look at this, you know. And look. This is this one's pasted on there. So there's another Joe the Egg underneath there that's even worse than this one. And you know, all these all these things I took into the computer and worked on and, and cleaned up as much as I could. This is little Henry, who's another one of my original characters. Uh, here's here's me trying to draw a human being. Terrible. Look at all those little eggs. 
first page. You know, and on and on and on and on and on and on and on. I think there's like 32 pages, you know. Lemonade. See the robot clown is mechanical dog. I don't think that one, I don't know if that one made it in or not. Oh, here's, a, here's another educated cow. So, you know, I would, oh, here's another strong man, you know. So, like, there's two different strong men. I don't know which one ended up in the book. One of those did. Drunken Carrot making an early appearance. Very early Mope the Onion. Senor Cork. Little Henry. And, you know, look, you know, look, I, I've changed the lettering on here. The balloon was too high, so I cut it out and moved it down. <laughs> you know, and then this is, uh, this is the back panel. And then uh, Tattooed Pickle. And here's like another one of that one. I think I had another one of that one in here. So that one I might have done. Might have had to do that one a couple of times. Or oh, maybe not. Eh, I don't know. And, oh, there it is. The last one. The cover. So there's the cover. You know, just boom, boom, boom. Colored it all on the computer. Took it out to a printer, like, local. And he did it up, and I sent him out to, you know, a bunch of uh, a bunch of publishers. Because I had, like, a, you know, how to get yourself in print book. And there was all these publishers, and I, I sent a bunch of them out. And a lot of them just got returned unopened. Um, I heard years later one guy found it, you know, like, sitting around. You know, I guess they have, like, sort of a pile of books that came in. And he was, and he tried to, you know, he tried to champion it to people, and they... They all said no. <laughs> so, you know, it, it, but it but it, it started me out. You know, it, it gave me, it gave me something. It gave me something, you know. It gave me something that I could take to shows, that I could show to people, that I could, you know, that existed. Um, and, I, you know, I think that's a lot of the key to being an artist is you just want something you can show to people. You know, that sort of, that sort of says, um, I exist. It's not just a pipe dream. This, this is, this is what I want to do. I would like to do a kid's book. And, you know, I, I did the kid's book and I did, I did a couple of comic books, which were based on the web comics. And then we did the Mr. Toast comics, which were stories, which were drawn by Todd Webb, which was one of the smartest things, you know, I ever did in, working on Mr. Toast. Initially, when I was doing Mr. Toast, I was thinking I would work with a bunch of artists. And that just never panned out. I worked with my buddy Chris Merritt. He did some drawings for me. And I just realized, I don't know what's going on, you know? So it's better for me to sort of work on my skills and get better at what I was doing. And then, you know, at that point at which Todd and I started to work together, I, I was ready. Because at the beginning, I wasn't ready. Because I didn't know how to write. I didn't know how to do anything. And, you know, I, I taught myself from square one about writing. And, you know, that was, that was in 2004. And what is it, 2020? So 16 years. 16 years now, I feel like I'm a, I'm a decent writer. And I think I know what I'm doing. When I sit down to write something, I can write a complete thing, which starts at point A and ends at point B and has a bunch of stuff in between. Um, Todd and I are working on another project right now, which we actually submitted to a publisher, but it got turned down. But I, at one point we, we'd written like one story of it, you know, a little, little 10 pager or something to, you know, to sort of feel out the characters. And then I just went and I wrote the rest and I wrote, you know, I don't know, it's like a 70 page comic. And I just sat down and wrote it. And, he, you know, he and I went back and forth and we figured it all out. And uh, it's, I, I, I really like it. And, but that was, that was through trial and error of learning how to write. Um, and, you know, every, every writer will always tell you, you know, the only way to learn how to write is by writing. And it's absolutely true. I do think you can take classes and learn a lot of things, which I think, I think taking classes is an incredibly smart thing to do. Um, but I am blathering on. Uh, here's a, in the midst of this, 
Here's like a little story I wrote when I was a kid, dreaming of a better place, where I sort of uh, map out a utopian society where everyone lives in triangular houses and has heliports on the uh, roofs. Very much fun. Um, these are more, these are more uh, ideas for some of the theme park stuff. Some little Henry stuff. Which you you know I I know it's super early stuff when it's when it's little Henry stuff. You know this is this is probably from college. What's this on the back of? Here's oh yeah this is this is from 1988. One of my uh, some of our teachers were in a performance group called the Shrimps. It's very early drawing of Mr. Toast. This is a copy of it. And here's oh this is a really interesting little bit of scrap Joe the egg viewmaster script so I was gonna try and make my own viewmasters this is before I was thinking about mr. toast and so I was trying to figure out you know something about Joe the egg so he wakes up he's hungry he go wanders into the sewers and he gets surrounded by rats he gets taken to the Rat King, and he gets appointed court jester, and then the mice come, and there's a big procession of mice. I don't remember any of this. The Rat King says Joe can live there. Oh, okay, that's very nice. And then he gets... He is, Joe talks to the mice, talks about paying tribute to Joe's jokes lesson. I don't even know what this is saying. But, you know... I was thinking about being a Viewmaster artist at this point. Whatever that means, you know, I was going to make Viewmasters because I had I bought a Viewmaster camera, I think, somewhere. And um, I think I, I might have shot like one roll of film, of Viewmaster film. <laughs> this one, there's a really early Mr. Toast in the microscopic garden. Very fun. We'd have a Noah's Ark, which was a very common... A common theme in um, Noah's Ark uh, zoos and things often had Noah's Ark's ride, a cloud fountain, little drawing. And then this is the Adventures in the Silicate Jungle, which is based on um, magic rocks. So that was an idea I was thinking about. Oh, and here at this point, let's look at where, where, we, where I'm at at this point is we've got handmade Mr. Toast dolls. Got my book, Mr. Toast Circus is out. I'm making t-shirts like Paul Frank and I have a, a, a silkscreen poster of the hillbilly pears and those posters I, you know I went with one of the gig posters guys because there was this gig posters website so I found a guy and he printed it up this is beautiful I mean my art was fairly terrible and I think I ended up having to give them away because nobody really wanted them um what is this oh no that's who knows uh, I always wanted to have like a beehive thing. I wanted to have a slide that was a dragon inside of a lighthouse, which Chris Merritt worked on that at one point. Um, and then this is kind of funny. This is like a big bunch of drawings I made that were like all the characters. So I, so I got all the characters together in this one big giant drawing I dug up every different character that I had from the strip and I mean look at the look at Lemonhead who's now Lemonhead with his tiny mouth and giant eyes so that's that's some real primordial stuff oh then after that oh, this is a, you know what is this this is a some sort of Swiss cheese wall and I did like a start a garden which was a little thing that was a was another giveaway and of course I always was sort of thinking about souvenirs and giveaways so I was always trying to make little things that I could sell or give away or sort of use to interact with the world because I love Disneyland souvenirs so that was always sort of an aspect of it so I wanted to also do another book I was thinking about maybe at the same time or maybe right after the circus was called our solar system 2003 look I did it twice pick the one you like oh I apologize I did it thrice <laughs> and I did these these big black and white a lot of them were black and white and I kind of and, and I'm I'm you know at this point I'm starting to kind of kind of have a style I mean look at this 
you know, we got the sort of thing. We got the Mr. Joseph silhouette. We got the stars. I mean, this is this is still this is still one of you know what I'm doing today. Old woman meteorite, which is somewhere. You know, I'm I'm trying to figure out how to draw something so it looks three dimensional. You know, and I'm slowly getting there. This would have been a two-page spread of Mr. Toast's into the meteorite field. I think this would have been a Uranus one. This one would have had something overlaid on top of it. I don't remember what though. And you know, here I'm really looking at a picture of Mars and I'm trying to draw it and paint it and yeah, yeah. This one's a little, whoops, a little upside down. You know, here we got Jupiter. Man, does that look three dimensional? No, it doesn't. Um. And in this one, I wanted to draw a satellite in space, but I didn't know how to draw the satellite in space. So I just drew it, and then I was going to fill that in with black somehow. Terrible. You know, here's another one. Uh, for some reason, I cut that part out. I don't know why. And then, oh, I cut it out because I liked that part of the drawing, and I used it on this one, which I, which I liked better. And then this one's okay. I was looking at a picture of a planetarium. These... These trees could use some help, but planetarium's all right. You know, looking at Jupiter from one of Jupiter's moons. Wait, that's not Jupiter, that's Saturn. Looking at Saturn from one of Saturn's moons. Uh, there's Shutterbug with pictures he's taken all around the universe. And this one's kind of a nice drawing. Senor Cork with a moon and globe. And also at this time... Um, I, I started fooling around with Space Duck, maybe a little later. And at one point, um, there's Space Duck. At one point, I was pitching to Disney. Somehow, I I think I was doing Comic-Con, and I met some... Because I started doing Comic-Con, and I think that would have been 2005. And I met Larry Marder, who does Bean World, and he came in, and he kind of knew my stuff a little bit. And then some Disney guys came in, Mike Moon, a guy named John Solomon, I think. Um, and they were like, we like Mr. Toast, but, um, you know, you seem like you're sort of invested in that. What else do you have? And so um, I pitched him on Space Duck. And, uh, you know, didn't go anywhere. <laughs> didn't go anywhere. Eh. Story, story, story of my life. Didn't go anywhere. Um, this is later stuff. I don't know what that is. They're looking in a pit. Oh, and then this is some stuff from, I think, I think the first Mr. Toast comic. And his friend Joe the Egg. And I have all the stuff from the, I think this is the first, you know. So here we're, we're sort of introducing everybody. You know, look at Shaky Bake definitely needs to be cleaned up in Photoshop. Mope's hair is kind of like, ooh. This one, I think this was uh, one of the daily comics. Here's like, this is an earlier micro garden thing. I don't know what this, maybe this was for, um, I always wanted to do some science books. So this was sort of an idea of a pitch of some science books based on probably some golden science books. Oh, and these are some more things from the... Uh, this stuff's a little later. I, I'm starting to be able to draw. So some of the different aliens from the different planets of Space Duck. And then this is, this is it says Rock and Roll bl Bland. Rock and Roll Bland. So instead of a Rock and Roll Band, I think the bit was it was going to be called the Rock and Roll Bland. Okay. Oh, here we go. <laughs> There's uh, John Solomon's phone number, where I was supposed to go. So as you can see, I was working on all this as I was, as I was planning on pitching this to, to Disney. Um, and you know, it's like I know back then I didn't know what the hell I was doing. You know, I'm in there pitching to Disney, and I'm pulling out paintings and drawings, and I made like a little wood sculpture of Space Duck, which, um, which uh, uh, 
Scott Edwards has in his house now. And, you know, there's Space Duck. That one that one actually made it to Nickelodeon Studios when I had a little show in the lobby of Nickelodeon Studios. Um, but, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. I mean, I was just making stuff that, that I found that I found interesting. Um, and that's, that's, that's kind of all, all you can do is, is make stuff that you find interesting. You know, here's some other, some more little bits and pieces. These probably, uh, something. Oh, here's a, there's a zombie bacon. I think that might've been the art for the zombie bacon, um, the tag. Oh, here's, and what does it say on the back? This says, the original design for the drunken carrot doll. So this is the incredible drawing that I did that I then sent over to China. I have the original drawing to the Mr. Toast doll, which we'll get to in a second, I think. This this is what I would send them. You know, probably put the dimensions on there in the computer. And then they would then <laughs> uh, send me a drunken carrot doll. And this was a, I think this was maybe some show in Europe and they uh, were just talking about the Mr. Toast. They were, you know, getting a bunch of artists that uh, sort of dealt in um, that sort of dealt in uh, um, I don't know what I'm trying to say. That sort of did plush. Something like that. There was a whole drawings microby stuff you know more drawings more space drawings galactic space tadpole you know this is early ideas for mr toe's costume birdopolis which is a sculpture i have birdopolis is a sculpture i have in my living room if anyone's ever been over here They've probably seen Birdopolis. Early Beaker Guy and Atomic Guy. Professor Isotope. This is a. Uh, this is from 2011 when this company Herding made uh, Mr. Toe's bed sheets. This is like the payment or the contract or something. When they were, you know, they sold 14,000 euros worth of. Uh, Mr. Toast bed sheets, and I got 1400 euros for doing nothing. Here's a this is fun. This is my price list, which I ha would have had on my Comic Con. Um, would have had on my Comic Con. Oh, this is probably this is actually this is the very first, um, first time I did Comic Con, which would have been I think 2005, and I would have been in small press. And so Mr. Toast Doll, so Imaginary World Comics number one was out. That was the one that um, Todd, the place where Todd was working. They printed that. Mr. Toast Circus, $3. T-shirts were 15 Pennants were some, um, my buddy Dallas was running a screen printing place. And he, I don't know if he did all my shirts, because I know I did a bunch of them locally. But he also printed up these cool pennants. Gag's book was a thing I made just for Comic-Con. I made a hundred of them. So there's only a hundred of those babies out there. And I laser printed... Yeah, I think I bought a laser printer and I laser printed every page, both sides, and then I hand stapled them. They're really good looking. Uh, Mr. Toast dolls were handmade. I think the first handmade ones, there was about 20. Small Stories was another little thing I made. And then the tattooed pickle doll was also doubt my buddy Dallas also screen printed and made those. He made those and he made the Senor Quirk dolls. Um yeah, so the price list from first Comic Con. <laughs> uh and some poster for a dollar. Mm, I don't know. Might have been the UFO poster. I don't know what that was. Uh, you know. Application space for Comic Con in two thousand and six. This is Jumping back again, this is some very early Lemonhead stuff. Very early. Very, very, very early. Oh, this is uh, Dallas's screen print business. It was Monkey in a Dryer, and this was for um, a bunch of shirts that he made. $324 worth of shirts. Those were the good old days when I could... I used to sell a lot of shirts at the Comic Cons. This is... What is this? some sort of oh this is a 
this is later but this is the this is the weenie king story that i wrote i think i wrote this at comic con in a world far away there's a mysterious castle where dwelt the weenie king its supreme master hmm. I, thought this, I thought this actually scanned who knows the bird hopped around and shook snow from its wings then took a quick flight and landed on the king wings king that scans a little bit um this was not right the king the king was a solitary person this bird would upset his daily diversions person diversions eh, the scans okay and the weenie king is uh another character we kind of fool around with they ate meals together in the grandest of halls admired the sunsets from the castle walls so i i enjoy trying to write like that it's fun to do every once in a while and then this is the original design for the very first Mr. Toast doll, which I sent off to the factory in China. Uh, he's 10 inches tall, brown on the side, tan on the front, big eyes, uh, little black arms, little black legs, uh, plush with felt eyes, with felt eyes, arms, and legs. So professional. Um, as you can see, he's 10 inches tall. You're all like, yeah, that's the mega Mr. Toast, but all the normal Mr. Toasts are seven inches tall well it just so turns out that initially i want to make my dolls bigger i want to make them bigger because you could sell them for a, a little bit more money not a little bit more money twice as much money and you know the the comparable i was looking at were were ugly dolls which had just sort of hit the scene and were were doing great and i love them and i found them at golden apple and you know giant robot had them and they were just wonderful still are wonderful just a great property and inspiring to me so i was like i want to be in that business and so i thought mr toast should be 10 inches tall and then uh i i you know i i sent this off and then for some reason i also was like i i, I want to see a small one too i want to see i want to have a seven inch and a 10 inch seven inch 10 inch and they sent me the samples and i don't know if it was shannon my wife I don't know how we came to the realization that the seven inch was the doll because it was the exact same size as a piece of bread and that just made sense and so when i put in the first order and also doing a bunch of the big ones would have just taken up an infinite amount of space and i you know i was gonna have them here in my apartment this and in truthfully in this room that i'm still sitting we we lived in this place since 2000 and the dolls were I don't know, I guess 2005, 2006 was probably when we first got the dolls. And I was like, it's going to take up a lot of room. <laughs> so instead, I was like, okay, we're going to go with the small ones because the small ones were cute as hell. And I had 3,000 small ones made and I had 300 of the big ones made. And when we did our first Comic-Con with the dolls... The small ones outsold the big ones 20 to 1. And it wasn't just because of price. It was because people wanted the small ones. And that, you know, that's a that was a big... I mean, it wasn't really a lesson, but it was... I did learn a serious thing that day. It's like... Um, you know, you want to really think about those things. Because you're going to be affected, you know, if you spend... If you spend that much money on um on one thing you better be uh get ready you better be uh ready to sell it this is i don't know what this is my heart shaky bacon oh this is like a t-shirt concept i think i made that shirt could have uh, my drawing's getting a little better I think this is the one that ended up in the book. It's not with the others. Happy Fourth of July drawing. This was like a drawing for doing a 3D Mr. A 3D Joe Dag and Mr. Toast for. I think Charles Bernard was working on a 3D version, so he. Uh, so I sent him that. And then these are what the these are what the comic strips were like. 
They're pretty damn big. This one, un oh, this is an unused one from 11-2005. Missed manhole cover. Why that one wasn't used? Couldn't even begin to tell you why that one wasn't used. And I also was thinking about doing like an alphabet book. Firefighter. Tractor. And then I don't know what these are. There's Stonehenge. The Eiffel Tower. And you know, when we got around to doing the first Mr. Toast book, and this one's money and an orange. Sometimes I would smear apple pie. I don't know what these are. Here's like a cute little cute little graphic. Oh, and then this this is when we started working on the Mr. Toast iPhone game. <laughs> and that's just like endless endless the, the when you when you uh when you knock over the fire hydrant it shoots water. Uh there's a tree you can run into and the tree and trees and trees and cell phones and <laughs> hey look another tree black widow spider and money i don't know if that ended up in the game a clock what else is there i don't know oh Shaky bacon with the shake weight. Me drawing quisp. Me drawing quake. At some point there's like a cow that you run into. It's kind of sad that we can't play this game anymore. That was like one of the screens or something. Another one of the screens. These were like some of the modes you go into. Ghost mode, mega mode, mini mode. Finish line and speed up. And then there was always a dream to do like these other environments. I think maybe we did do... Maybe we did... I guess we did do like an outdoor environment. These are... I think these might be button designs. I don't know. And that's the thing, you know, oh man, much more of the classic designs, the dumpster, the mailbox. And I mean, this is what goes into making a game. There's the original street you walked on. Piece of vellum that I worked on. The banana you slipped on. All the different foods that you ate to gain power on the different levels. Cowboy hats and stuff. These were like parts that showed you how you tipped the game when you were playing the game. God. Jeez. This is the... When he turned into the ghost. Man, there's just so much stuff. So, yes. And then... Oh my gosh. And then these are, and then these are, these are all, um, these are all like the comic strips. You know, it's hard to, because there's tons and tons and tons of them. What's this? This might have been for, this is for the postcard. Like the postcard I think I still use. And then the super early comic strips were done on these. They're a little smaller. A little smaller. I think these are. No, these are for these are for like a little giveaway comic I did, I think. Yeah, these are for the, 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 the giveaway comic. And then these are all, I don't even know what these are. <laughs> nice though maybe these were for that postcard and you know we can just it just goes on forever and forever and forever here's like uh fan club rules look both ways stay out of trouble adventure explore have fun 
the art for the Celery Stocks t-shirt, which was a classic back in the day. Oh, that actually, there's the there's the celery from the Celery Stocks. That was a nice shirt. The Endless Task, Mr. Toast in a Snow Globe. And here's some more really early stuff. The Sun Gate. The Musical Fence. The Spooky Shirt, which was a very early shirt. Information booth, Adventures in Outer Space, which was that one book I was trying to trying to come. And when I sent out the very first, when I sent out the very first stump, how are we doing on time? Well, only forty minutes. You've probably all given up at this point, but it doesn't mean I have to. I'm going to stop. When I sent out those first books, Mister Toast is knocking on doors, looking for a publisher. Still looking for a publisher. We've enclosed a couple copies of our latest publication, Mr. Toast at the Circus. If you're interested in helping him reach a larger audience, please contact Dan Goodsell. 323-930-763, Grickly at Yahoo. Da, 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 da. Yeah, that's... <laughs> that makes me laugh still. Gatorland. What is this? I don't even know. These are... At one point, I got to be in um, Color Ink Book. Let me be in one of their books, and so I did. I did the whole Zodiac, which I've been trying to do these colors. And like, I mean, look at—you know—I'm pretty proud of these drawings. These drawings I like. Took me took me eight or ten years, but I finally am producing. Look at this nice, nice big shaky bacon drawing. Put that on the sale pile. Um, oh, and these are these are from the other um, color ink book, which was the All Mr. Toast one, which is called Traveling. And this is uh, this is the inside front cover, and then each of these is a different. Place. Do it yourself, Berlin Wall. Yes, Alpenhorn, Switzerland, Venice. And it's funny because I wasn't. I kind of worried about these drawings when I did them, but looking at them now, they're they're much nicer than I remember them being. I always sort of felt like they had some problems. And like here you go. Here's another Dan Goodsell classic. Uh, don't own any white paint, so I just uh, drew the stuff in black and then I flipped it in Photoshop. <sighs> and this one, you know, put that one together. Ready to party in Vegas. Daus. Yeah. I think there's like 64 pages, so there was a lot of drawings. If Those ones are available if anybody's looking for uh, <laughs> one of those for their collection. If you're looking for one of those, oh, uh, for your collection, let me know, Mr. Toast. This won't hurt a bit. Oh, look, there's only there's only this much more drawings in here. I always wanted to do a book called Mr. Toast's Digest of Fun. Um, as you might guess, I still have not done that. Um, very early business card I think one time oh here's the here's the art for that uh, that flyer one time when I was at the New York Comic Con I'd forgotten to bring business cards so I just went and um, I just drew some up and then went over and uh, went to the FedEx thing and uh, and had them printed out you know just on like cardstock and then just cut them up in my booth Mr. Toast, he's the everyman of the imaginary world. I was always trying to figure out how to, you know, make it so that, uh, make it so that, um, I used to go to New York Comic Con, which was fun. Trying to figure out how to make it sound like, um, I knew what I was doing back in the day. Ouch Comics. This was, I think, the first design for any of the shirts was the Mr. Toast Tours, the Imaginary World. 
the very first this is like the art for the very first shirt I ever did this this on a comic board as opposed to these other nice ones which are all on um which are all on uh Bristol board That's some I mean some of the, the watercolors on watercolor board I think this was for when I went to Germany I did a button Mr. Toast Tours Berlin and you know here we have one, an old one Mr. Toast home from Comic Con what do we got we got an ugly doll we got cartoon modern we've got art of the prank what is art of the prank I don't know gamma go thing going on on there these are more comics more comic oh my god look at this is I think this is from the gags comic this is where I first started exploring Mr. Toast having small eyes and ended up Mr. Toast has small eyes now <laughs> is this the this is a drawing I've always loved Antarctica coldest place on earth I'm gonna pull that one out because that one shouldn't be buried in here I used to have that in a frame on the wall so and then here's a very early Mr. Toast made these folders who made it printed out a sticker here's the uh, the first designs yeah, that tours one never, you know, didn't make it into this because it, it was too early. It was like I'd make my own postcards back in the day. Drunken Carrot, Snow Cone Monster, Mr. Toast Beast, Mr. Toast, and the Sun, which, you know, like so professional. Here's my folder. Like I know what I'm doing. There's Birdopolis. Oh, an early color map of the imaginary world looking a little better this I actually like this this is kind of a nice drawing a weird place where you'd go in there and something something would be going on I don't know what would be going on. oh crikey I'm gonna set this big pile on the ground these are little these little peanut guys from something what were those guys from Maybe one of the beginning of the books. Very early Mope the Onion and the Onionettes. He was part of a uh, part of a singing group. Oh, here we go. Yeah, there's going to be a whole imaginary world science series. Guide to the solar system journey of the Adam prehistoric planet. Yeah, prehistoric planet. Your pal, the periodic table, botanical chemistry some good ideas botanical chemistry um i'm still developing those santa claus with a reindeer in a boat the north poles like you know it's like a cool santa claus autobiography in progress this is this might have been this might have been my very first watercolor drawing of mr toast And I think, yeah, I think this was the first one. And it was like, I was like, okay, I think I can do this. I mean, you know, it's not an incredible drawing, but it has a lot of the seeds, uh, seeds of where I was going. Um, here's a, another one of the space ones. And a bunch more of the dailies. And then, oh, see, and then we get into these are like all parts of the Mr. Toast comics because what I would do with the Mr. Toast oh there's the there's the cover to imagine the cover to imaginary world comics number one I should pull that out too put that somewhere and the next issue is going to be space duck still have done the space duck episode but what I would do is I'd use I'd use one of these uh I'd use one of these comics as the main panel and then to make it comic size I'd add a little bonus panel so I had to do bonus panels for all of them <sighs> so much work <laughs> so much work oh at one point I did a 24-hour comic which was fun which was fun 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 oh I have to pack all this back in this thing at some point how am I doing on time I have I'm at 49 minutes I got 10 more minutes um sketchbooks uh, we could spend a lifetime going through sketchbooks because 
This this book when we no one is allowed to see. Oh look at this. Dinosaurs and Dragons. Pick and save, 59 cents. Um this is my college book where I wrote in it what happened on Thursday. Oh my god. So embarrassing. Got up in the morning. Watched Family Ties. Watched Family Ties. Read some. Then we talked about, oh, we played music. Oish. Spot, head shake, retreat, the spot. Oh, yeah. Wow. Ugh. I'm proud of a lot of uh, what I do art wise nowadays. But, you know, when you really go back to college, uh, you can find some really, really embarrassing, embarrassing stuff. This is, oh, this looks like it's all the artwork to Mr. Toe Superheroes. So this is all the pages to Mr. Toe Superheroes. And there's a little sketch for what the cover would, would look like. So all in one nice place. And if anybody ever cares about this stuff in the future, I'll still have most of it. And, uh, <laughs> uh, like with the with the ones with Todd, we would split up the pages. I got a, some of the pages, and Todd got a bunch of the pages, and then Todd sold all his pages. And at some point, I would get some back from him. I'd buy them back from him. So I still have a bunch of pages, um, but he got rid of most of his. And I think I have most of the covers. And so this would be like I'd keep track of how much I'd sell at Comic Con. And this I don't even know what's this, you know. Oh, this is an old one. So you can tell. He's looking through a thing. Yeah, this is a this is an old this, you know. Oh, there's the we looked at that painting, blown fuse. So that's how old this one is. This is this is two thousand and two old. And when I was doing my fairy tale paintings, I did a bunch of fairy tale paintings. I have still have a box of a bunch of the old paintings. We'll go through the paintings one of these days. You can re-suffer re, re that with me, relive that suffering with me, if you're so in, uh, if you're so inclined. And then this is kind of interesting. I don't think I've talked about this before. Is the way we would do the Mr. Toast comics, me and Todd. Um, what would happen is I would go through. And I would, uh, I would um, make all the, I would map out each page. This page just says snake. Oh, here we go. A damsel in distress. This is Mr. Toast number two. Help, there's a snake. Okay. And so what I would do is I'd kind of, Here's the, I'd like to, but I'm in the middle of a seance. This is when Mr. Toast goes over to Shaky Bacon's house. And, um, and uh, Shaky Bacon has other problems. Um, and this is what I would do is I would just map out sort of each thing, you know, and this one, it says dinner interrupted, doorbell, who could that be, mailman, mailman already came and so i would map out each one oh this is the night music story map all this out and so i i knew what was happening in each panel you know but i didn't know how to draw the scene so i would just map it out and then i would take each of these and i would lay them out and get them where you know where i had all the pages you know this leads to 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 finale and then I would type up a script and I would never show these to Todd. Never, you know, you, you know, this knock, knock, knock. No, because I didn't want to influence him at all with the way that I, I drew so terribly. And then he would, um, he would, uh, he would then work his magic, which what he does is magic, you know, an artist that can, can render story through scene is, is amazing to me because i i have never you know you've seen what i can do i it's it's 
pretty rudimentary. <laughs> I'm proud of it, but most of my things are a person, a character standing in front, you know. This is what I'm good at doing. I can look at a photo of something real and then put one of my characters standing in front of it. My, everything I do is basically a postcard for a location. And so, you know, so then I would send him the script and he would do it. And, you know, this is from uh, Mr. Uh, the Mexico one where, where they go to, down to Mexico. Try it. You'll like it. Local cuisine. Um, and, yeah. And then I would just work it up. I'd send it to, you know, so the, this would be a page. Zocachil. Or, I don't know how you say that, even after I put it in my book. And then I, you know, maybe provide him some reference to that. Say I want these beautiful boats. We are called luchadors. It's like wrestling, suiting up. Like I've, I've just sort of basically put two characters in space. I've not drawn their, you know, maybe I gave him an explanation as to what I wanted the luchadors to look like, or maybe I didn't. I have no idea. So. Uh, let's get to the very bottom of this box so we can call this this video done and then we never have to dig into this box cloud fountain very early beaker guy some birdopolis going on there this is drawn by somebody not me i don't know who did these who did these I don't know who did this. Mr. Toast Party. I kind of like the crazy shaky bacon. These look very. These are really kind of nice. Where does Mr. Toast like travel? Fancy signature here. They look kind of like Bob's Burgers. I don't know. If you're watching this and you drew these, let me know because I don't remember where those came from. Very early vampire, drunken carrot. Little castles I drew. This is the this is the map for the very first um, Mr. Toast, my very first website. So this would be the up there, and then you'd um, be able to navigate where you were going to. Oh, and there's always oh there's a the witch's castle, which I did a painting of, and then um, let's see what else we got here. These are very early TV drawings that I did back in college. My 2006 um, Comic Con Inspire Marketing. Oh, here's this is the order form for when I did um, the 11th. Some oh, doing some Mr. Toast dolls. Doing the oh, this is for the very this is for the first good shaky bacon's. Boom. So first good shaky bacons were done in whatever year this thing was put out. Which, how does this not have a year on it? Eh, it doesn't have a year on it. I used to be obsessed with TV stuff when I was in college. Here's a Birdopolis plate design. Robotorama. I actually kind of like that one. I always like that drawing. And then the last one we're going to look at and it's pretty good this is like this is the most detailed map of the imaginary world that i ever got to doing and you know it was inspired by of course the big disneyland wall maps and as you can see i you know there's the big lawn building aesop's fables petting zoo this is like a this is fairy what was it called fairy fairy tale castle i actually made this God, i don't think i even have pictures of it uh, there's like a, there's a cloud fountain. There's the volcano. Here's a whole storybook land over here. That that actually kind of candy island, spooky uh, slide. What do we got over on this side? We've got. It looks like a, some sort of haunted mansion. There's like a, there's like a twister up here. Um, there's a farm, model electric farm, an ancient oak. There's a birdopolis. There's Otterarium. There's this this giraffe. I made a model of that. Oh, and this is um this is like the elephant train. Um, this is a big floral clock. 
Uh, these are some crazy. Uh, stuff. What is those? Those are. Oh, one of them's called the Side Coaster Ferris Wheel, like Ferris, like Iron. So this was, you know, oh, there's going to be like an Oz Park down here. Um, but this is uh, this is the this is kind of the ultimate of the imaginary world. This is a map. You know, there's probably, I don't even know if there's anything Mr. Toast on here. Well, there's a there's a statue of in the center. There's a statue of Little Henry, and there's a, a it's like a shaped like a drink. And then there was the mailbox, and there's the cannon. There were dinosaurs in the Dino Land. There's a Noah's Ark. Sub house. Man. It's kind of cool. Kind of cool. Oh, up here is a hist historical town. There's a firehouse. There's Oh, up here is like Hall of Science up here at the top. The Sun Gate. So, you know, where did all that go? Where did that idea go? Where did it come from? Where is it going? I don't know. But that's that's sort of the... That's sort of the shape of all the stuff in this box, which is, which is pieces of uh, pieces of the last twenty years. I guess this is twenty years of Mr. Toast. I have another two or three boxes. Maybe not two or three boxes. There are a couple more boxes like this. Maybe we'll do another one. But just a, a fair amount of the history of what what I've been up to, what I've uh, what I've been working to, working for. So hopefully, uh, hopefully you enjoyed this and saw a few uh, things in there that are surprising or interesting i don't know it's fun it's been a it's been a weird weird wild ride and um i'm not about to call it quits so uh have a good one i'll see you later